Hey, what's going on, creatures? Phenomenal Matt here. And, um, welcome to my WrestleMania reaction video. Uh, I gotta say, this WrestleMania was pretty good. They set records of 101,763 people overall, um, in there, and I thought that was pretty fantastic. Um, but, um, overall there were some... There were actually most of the ones where I got my uh, predictions wrong. Uh, so, to start it off, uh, some of my predictions were right though, by the way. But to start it off, you had the pre-show. And on the pre-show, it was Kalisto versus Ryback for the WWE United States Championship. And these guys had one heck of a match. And then eventually... Um, Kalisto retained the United States Championship like I said he would because Kalisto is pretty cool. I left it in the comments section below because I forgot to mention that. Um, and uh, then you then the kickoff show was on and I had another prediction right. Um, so it was at 5 on 5 uh, Divas Tag Team Match. It was Team Total Divas versus Team Bad and Blonde. And, uh, Teen Total Divas pulled out the victory, and then afterwards, Nikki Bella came out and, uh, celebrated with them, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I didn't really watch the match, because I honestly didn't care, um, and stuff, so, that was honestly something I skipped out on. And then, on the other match on the kickoff show, you had the Usos versus the Dudley Boys. What a match these guys had. They had super kicks everywhere, but here's the thing. They're not the Young Bucks. Why have so much super kicks? They're not the Young Bucks. Um, but can you guys just imagine if the Young Bucks were to make their debut into WWE? Imagine the nice six-man tag style they would have with AJ Styles. I can see that happening right now. That the Young Bucks are going to debut to WWE. And then they're going to do Twins versus Twins. They're going to do the Uso Twins versus the Young Buck Twins. And imagine that whenever super kicks go flying everywhere from the Young Bucks. I would, I would put my money on the Young Bucks. I like the Young Bucks. I think they're the most... I think they're the greatest high-flying tag team I've ever seen right next to the Hardy Boys. Um... Because the Hardy Boys can jump off of anything. Now the Young Bucks can are pretty much the younger version of the Hardy Boys. Um, but eventually the Usos pull out the win against the Dudley Boys, like I said. And then they pulled tables out. Um, and uh, then put them through with uh, double Uso Splash. Ow, ow. My cat. Sorry. My cat was... Uh, Trying to get to me, so, um, then it leads us into, uh, the regular show of WrestleMania, and the first thing that starts off is the ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. My prediction was going with Kevin Owens. I thought Kevin Owens had this thing won. I thought he was going to pull something out of his pocket and, um, hit someone and hit somebody with it, but it turns out Sami Zayn did, like, um... So like some sort of suplex, uh, skull crushing finale thing backwards, um, onto a ladder, uh, to Kevin Owens, and, um, Kevin Owens is down, Zack Ryder was the only one up on the ladder, and Zack Ryder pulled down the Intercontinental Championship, and became the new Intercontinental Champion, I mean, like, we haven't seen him in quite a while, but, hey, he deserves, he deserves to have a nice title run like Kevin Owens did. Oops, excuse me, um, then, you got the second match of the night, like, I thought this one was gonna be the best match, I thought this was gonna be the match that fans wanted to see, cause I definitely wanted to see it, and I don't think that it's boring at all, I don't think the fans thought that it was boring, I mean, some people here and there thought that it was boring, because they were more focused on the New Day, but it was a match between... Y2J, Chris Jericho, and the phenomenal AJ Styles. Jericho's 13th WrestleMania, was AJ Styles' first WrestleMania. Oh my gosh, AJ's family was watching live, sitting in, sitting in the seats somewhere. I don't know where they were, but they were sitting in the seats somewhere, 
and AJ was was fighting Jericho, and I can't believe he lost. I thought AJ was gonna have this as a win, but it's gonna bring him down to this. AJ and Jericho will fight one more time at the next pay per view. Extreme rules, and then AJ is gonna pull out that victory. I know that for a fact. Um, but at but Extreme Rules is pretty far away from now, so um, so we'll have to wait on that. But um, anyway, you also got uh, you also have um, you got AJ doing all sorts of high flying maneuvers. He did the phenomenon, which was um, the springboard backflip DDT thing that he does, which I think is a really awesome move. And there were. Um, he also did the springboard 450. That was awesome. I really want to try that sometime. Um, and then, um, then what happens next is, uh, eventually Chris Jericho's trying to use, uh, the Styles Clash against AJ. And that's AJ's own finishing maneuver. So what, so what happened is this. AJ fought out of it. Eventually, I think he hit the Pele kick. And then he went ahead and did a move that that I think I read that said was banned. He hit the bloody Sunday on to Chris Jericho. Still didn't get the three count. He had the Styles Clash on Jericho. Jericho still kicked out and fought until the very end. Styles went for that phenomenal forearm again, and Jericho hit and, and Jericho hit the code breaker while Styles was in midair and got the three count. I mean this match was good. I liked it, but it wasn't as good as their match at Fastlane that they had. That match at Fastlane was really awesome. I liked that. Um, but uh, then eventually that leads. Uh, so that's not over yet. Um, and eventually, like I said, AJ will get the win against the rivalry um, with those two. But what I think is bound to happen, though. Um, what I think is bound to happen is that uh, Jericho might get screwed in maybe the next coming match or whatever. Because AJ might fight him like one-on-one -on -one and then beat him. And then afterwards, I think, uh, I think the Balor Club will make a debut and add AJ Styles as their fourth member. I think that's what's going to happen because... If you guys have watched Bullet Club in Japan, oh my gosh, this team was awesome. In Japan and Ring of Honor, I watched I watched that team fight. And the two companies, uh, obviously I had to watch Japan on YouTube. But Ring of Honor, I have that for my television. And I gotta say, Bullet Club, definitely like the best stable I have ever seen. Um, but... I hope that that's what's going to happen. They're going to make a reformation. Anyway, that leads into another match. I think it was for uh, the retired Divas Championship and the new WWE Women's title. What a match they had. I thought Sasha Banks or Becky Lynch was going to win. I did not know that Charlotte was going to get the win by submission. Um, because Ric Flair grabbed Sasha Banks' uh, foot or leg or whatever and just stayed um right there and just held her and charlotte tapped out um and i i thought that sucked um but you next next after that you got or wait no whoops i messed up but oh well but you got uh you got the new day fighting the league of nations in a nice match and i gotta say that match was pretty awesome as well. Um, that match, well, not really that awesome, but uh, it was okay. I mean, the New Day made such a nice entrance coming out of a Bootio cereal box. Like, really? New Day's coming out of a Bootio cereal box? Um, and having such a great entrance, though? I thought it was awesome. I literally thought that that was awesome. Um, and then... They fight the League of Nations, and New Day lost, uh, unsurprisingly, because Sheamus hit the brogue kick, and 
Got the three count. Um, so, right there, the new day had lost. Um, I lost all hope in that match and stuff, and it's just a bit upsetting. Um, also, as well, uh, like I said, for the women's title, yeah, Charlotte won that. But you also have the hardcore street fight that was on. And what a match that Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar had. I thought Dean Ambrose was going to get it because I thought the Wyatts were going to uh, come out and screw Brock Lesnar. But it turns out they didn't. Brock Lesnar hit him with an F5 on, on the steel chairs and got that victory as well. Then you then it eventually brings us down to the Hell in a Cell match with Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker. This was probably the best match of the night that I thought. Me and my one friend, we thought that that was the best match of the night. So, they're doing all sorts of cool moves and stuff like that. And um, eventually Shane McMahon, uh, eventually the Cell uh, thing broke. Um, because Undertaker put Shane McMahon through that and was beating on him, and then Shane was beating on him with the monitor and put him up on the announce table. Then Shane climbs up that that cell and he looks at the Undertaker to make sure that he's down, and he's looking at him like, "Okay, you're still down." He's getting prepared for a nice elbow drop, and he falls through. The announce table. And then Undertaker is still begging him to come on. Shane's still begging him to come on. And oh my gosh. Eventually, Undertaker uh, won. I mean, I said I didn't know who was going to win this. Uh, but Undertaker won. And uh, so, things like that uh, happened. And um, But speaking of the Wyatt family, though. Uh, later on, you got The Rock coming out. And he's talking about how they were setting records of 101,763 people overall in that, um, overall in WrestleMania of the attendance, the biggest kind of attendance that they had. And then, um, the Wyatt family come out to address The Rock saying, um, that he's like a creator of lies or whatever. And then The Rock was saying that Bray Wyatt's not the eater of worlds. He's the eater of Hot Pockets. And I thought that was pretty funny. The Rock is a hilarious dude. And I like the guy. Then he fought Eric Rowan in a six-second match. A record-setting match. But after The Rock wins by The Rock Bottom, the Wyatt family try to circle him. And out comes John Cena. John Cena comes out and saves The Rock. Fans are really happy about this. I was happy about it. But what I was expecting, though, was a return of everybody's favorite enigma, Jeff Hardy. But nope, that, that didn't happen at all. And I was somewhat upset in a way about it because I was hoping that they would have given him a big return. But let's hope, let's hope for tonight that he will return. Uh, next, it brought us after the Shane McMahon vs. Undertaker match. That brought us to the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And oh my gosh, you got surprise returns of Diamond Dallas Page. You got Shaquille O'Neal back. And I thought maybe Kane was going to win it. But nope, it turns out to be NXT superstar Baron Corbin. And I gotta say, I respect Baron Corbin. I like his talent and stuff. Um, yeah, he might be referred to as Lone Wolf in NXT, but who cares? I mean, I'd say I say he has talent. I mean, I know at NXT Takeover Dallas, he lost to Austin Aries, which he's a great and phenomenal performer as well. So uh, let's just be good and acquainted by that. And it and then that brings us to the last match, the main event match. Of WrestleMania, you got the WWE World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Triple H versus Roman Reigns. This time, my prediction was right. They had a nice match. Roman Reigns had such an entrance coming out. I mean, yeah, fans were booing him out of out of the ring because they didn't want to see him fight at all. Um, but uh, but I gotta say, it was a great match. And what was awesome was that he speared Triple H through the barricade, 
And um, he also speared Stephanie McMahon. I thought that was pretty hilarious. Like, like, hey, Stephanie, you're the one who didn't, who wanted to get in that ring to uh, sit to sit there and keep the referee distracted. So the referee and Triple H move out of the way. You get speared by Roman Reigns. Eventually, Triple H has the sledgehammer. He goes to hit Roman Reigns with it, but Roman Reigns hits the spear, gets the one, two, three. And now you got a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, I like Roman Reigns and everything. He's the top guy for the job right now. And I, and I wanted to see to see that. And um, I know a lot of people probably didn't want to see it, but at least he got some cheering for him. Um, but yeah, overall in that night, Roman Reigns won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and I believe that was all the matches that we've had, and this thing went on for like five or six hours. Oh my gosh, that's probably a record there too. But, uh, so that, so that does it all for, uh, my, for my, like, reaction video and stuff, but what I thought though too, is that in the Intercontinental Title Ladder Match, is that Sin Cara was trying to do the same thing like Jeff Hardy did at Money in the Bank at WrestleMania 23. When Jeff Hardy jumped off of the ladder and became the first guy to break a ladder um, with Edge on it, doing like the Rey Mysterio seated senton thing. That's what, that's what it sort of looked like uh, last night. Except you had Sin Cara, you had the Intercontinental title on the line, and he did it to Stardust uh, th through the ladder and did a crossbody. Um... But anyway, that concludes it for this video. Um, uh, if you guys liked it, aim the target to shoot that like button. I'll leave a comment for anything else you guys want me to do or whatever, and I will, I will be proud to do it. Um, I should get my computer working. Um, I should get my computer working by about like by about the next couple of days, and um, and then. Get some gaming videos back on for you guys and have my computer finally working. But um, for now, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, if you liked it, and the target to shoot that like button, leave a comment for anything else you guys want me to do, or whatever. And I gladly appreciate you guys watching. I thank you guys for watching. I will see all of you creatures in the next video. I'm out.